two, one, and we are live. This is 2OF Entertainment. Getting at the intro of your show is 17 minutes long. So <laughs> that's, the way, that's the way uh anthems are, you know. They have that's to true. Do. they set us yeah, up. And, uh yeah. yeah, that's become our our go-to theme. I appreciate that. You have your own anthem. That's pretty good. Countries don't even have their own anthem, most of them. You have like a whole anthem here. They must have something somewhere that's eh, they'll call they'll call David. David will make the anthem for them. Yeah, yeah. well yeah. tell David leave that alone. That so that's uh <laughs> That's yours. Yeah. It's kind of la 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 la. But we there you go. It's very <laughs> nice. Anyway, it's been uh it's been a busy summer. Uh, I yeah. Think, uh, I've had a little bit of a break, somewhat of a break, and then I came back and we did a few shows, and uh, we're well on our way to. Gosh, I don't know how many we're Greg, we're moving up there. We're getting close to hundred. You see, finishing up season two, which is really amazing yeah. that uh, we have that many. Good artists. I mean, and we have another one today, uh, Jocelyn uh, Bichard uh, from Quebec. And so, is she going to uh, speak French, or is she going to speak English? I am sure she can, but my French is not good. Yeah, I'm. Uh, this today's show will be I've lost, Yeah, I've lost my high school French. Uh, I have merci, and that's about it. <laughs> I love I can, it. I can, I can struggle in a restaurant. In a restaurant, that's about it. Anyway, we'll that's bring great. Jocelyn in, and she's uh, she's a watercolorist, and um, I think we'll talk about her work and some of the environmental mm -hmm. that she's mm -hmm. partaking in and, and and working with in her imagery. So, good morning. Yeah. Good day. Hi, good morning. Jocelyn, have a, have a great show. I'm going to leave because I know nothing about art. So this is all okay. you and Paul. Enjoy your show. I'll come back at the end Thank and ask you. my usual questions. But have a great interview. Cheers. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, well, it's morning for me and afternoon for you. That's that's the magic of this world, isn't it? That we can all. It is. It I don't is. think I've ever met so many artists in my whole life um, online, mostly, and uh, it's a pleasure to meet people from across the country. I mean, the diversity of art is amazing, and. Uh, the skill sets are uh, again amazing as well, uh, and as varied as as uh, I guess you learn and your and your background and your learning and how many years experience and and how you see the world. And I think that's going to talk about that a little bit today. And I think do you think a lot of that shows up in a person's artwork, like how they see the world, perceiving how things are. I think so. First off, Paul, I want to clear up. I am totally unilingual English. I have a French name because my mother named me Jocelyn, of course, and my last name used to be Macintosh, which is Scottish. <laughs> and I married a gentleman from Wales whose ancestors from Jersey off the coast of France, and that's how I got the last name Bouchard. There you go. <laughs> and a funny, a quick funny little story with that was I actually was a correctional nurse for 28 years. And after nursing for 25 years, I got uh, from the Lieutenant Governor an award, an exemplary service award. And he was French and spoke to me completely in French. And when I went to shake his hand, I said, I'm sorry, I didn't understand a word of what you just said. And uh, the next time I saw him, he spoke to me in English. So we can't always assume, I guess, by people's names. But uh, I do speak a little bit of French because I took it in high school. Now, I'm from New Brunswick, not Quebec. That's true. Um, I live just outside of St. John. And I travel a lot. So I think, to answer your question... By the different things we see in the world, it does enlighten us as artists, for sure. Yeah. No, I and sorry about that. I, I knew you were from, okay. uh, from Newfoundland or from uh, New Brunswick. I have Newfoundland on my head because I'm I'm planning a trip there next year. So I've got that. And, and St. John's often gets confused with St. John. 
It does. Yeah. So I have friends, uh, relatives come from Australia, and they were due to land in St. John's. And I finally told them, you've got to get <laughs> that changed. <laughs> You'd be, be riding the ferry back the other way. Yeah. 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 No, it's uh, and it's uh, it's a life dream of me to go to the Rock as well. So, but unfortunately, I have to bypass New Brunswick on the way to get there. But um, no, I've had a number of artists, good artist friends, that are uh, uh, living in New Brunswick as well. And I, uh, I, one day I do have to go there as well. It's just beautiful country. Can just I've been in right across the country, but I haven't. Uh, I have not been to New Brunswick. That's one province I haven't been to. Um, but let's let's just start some images up here and get okay. some left, and he can go to sleep at the board once he has that loaded. There you go. And uh, <clears throat> I think let's just talk with a little bit what your I guess we call it the art journey a little bit in the beginning. So your beginnings where where you began your career as as a watercolorist as a painter. Uh, you starting did it start in your youth very young? Or? No, no. Actually, I'm from a little town in New Brunswick, a population 700. So we did not have an art program at all. I did a little bit of art as in liquid embroidery with my mother when I was in high school, but I didn't actually start painting until 1992. Uh, my husband and I were sitting watching the sailboats go by in front of our house and I said, when I get older and retire, I'd like to start painting. And my husband said, well, you're not getting any younger. <laughs> so <laughs> the next day I went out and uh, got some books from the library and started researching. And I actually uh, <clears throat> took a course. And the first painting I did was in kind of an oil pastel that um, I did my parents portrait for their 50th wedding anniversary and that was quite the challenge but I had some help with it my father turned out better than my mother but they were well surprised because they didn't know that I could draw or paint mm. and so at that time I had been nursing and we uh it was a good way way to relax and I really took to it like a fish and water, I guess, and enjoyed it. Yeah. So do you do you do you kind of paint in kind of an insular way, like in your studio without anybody else around, or do you paint in groups as well? Or I do. Well, usually I paint by myself. However, I do have a friend, and we'll often get together and paint together. Uh, I've gone out and done plein air painting with several people. I've taken various courses as well. I took a watercolor course with uh, Ray Butler, who's quite a well-known watercolorist, or he was, pardon me, he's passed away, in St. John. I've taken pastel with Richard Flynn, who is originally from Newcastle in the UK and now lives in Cambridge Narrows. And, and I've painted with him, plus I have some of his artwork on display in my house. I love his work. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I've done a little bit of it all and I still do online courses because I feel we're always, we can always learn. Yeah, I, th I think that allows you the opportunity to, I guess, choose the pieces, I'll call it a puzzle. You choose the pieces of the puzzle of your life and your art that you want to accomplish in, right? So say you want to, uh, and you know, simplistically, you want to just have a color theory class. You can learn that and apply the color theories that you like about, like, so say you wanted to create moody works, then you you take one like that. Um, and I, the nice thing with online, you can choose. There's lots to choose from. Oh, um, there's a yeah. lot. I mean, anybody, I think, can really paint. They just have to apply themselves and like watch the different courses and work work on it. Um, I have heard some artists, friends who have gone to school say that really it doesn't necessarily teach or to university, it doesn't necessarily 
teach them what to do as in give them, it just gives them more perspective of the world. And that in some art schools actually discourage them from their own way is what they say. So I'm not yeah. for it's or not, against, yeah. but. Sometimes it's, I guess, almost like boot camp where they come in and they break you down <laughs> and then right. build you back up the way they right. want you to be right. in, academia, in academia. But I, I think the difference really between learning on your own and learning from educators is um, trying to follow your own path. And sometimes workshops are an actual how to do it, right? They, right. Not, not just how to, how to bump around and struggle and strife in your life. And you say, you know what? I just want to learn how to do that because I can apply that to my learning you know, oeuvre, like the, what you want to put in your portfolio package as far as how do I produce a piece of work? You know how to gradate a sky. You know how to do a drawing. You know when you should leave this white and when you should leave that alone and when to stop. You know, And right. some of that, it's just sort of inside right. Um, the big thing with watercolor is planning ahead. Oh, <laughs> yes, you got that right. Because you do have to plan your whites and your lights and that type of thing. And actually, I also work in pastel, which is almost the opposite. You can, but the good thing about pastel is it will cover, watercolor won't cover. So at one point, I think when I was first working, I would do watercolor and if i didn't like something i'd put pastel over it and i have done some paintings with a watercolor base and then pastel over them now this painting you have up the delphinium that is that is watercolor but and i try to paint realism but the uh the hummingbird is a little surreal in this however I can recall the day I saw this actually happen. happen. I, as I said earlier, I'm a nurse. And after I worked in correctional nursing for several years, I went to work extramural, which is uh, community nursing. And I was driving by these delphiniums and saw this hummingbird. So I pulled the car over and took a shot. And I do a lot of my paintings from photos I've taken. So they're from your own photos, though? Mostly. From my own photos. I have used photos uh, from an on-site line that gives photos to artists, but usually I take my own photos, and I do belong to a photography club as well because I'm, I, I tell you I have a picture of every flower in the world practically. <laughs> I have a lot, a lot of photos of flowers. <clears throat> well, flower, flowers are, are unique. I mean, I do flowers in a different way, but... Um, flowers are you know they can offer they can be a really uplifting thing they, they can be very transparent i love the aspect that they can see light through them and shadows around them and through them the the petals are a lot of times depends how the lighting is it's it's really about the lighting and the flowers right. can give a lot of different feelings um i mean this one here with the blues and the yellows and a little bit of the green it, it gives a nice there's a there's a nice feeling i like this one for the opening shot um yeah and the hummingbird you know i think surreal is not a bad idea like I, I love surrealism that that shocks people a little bit to say oh there's something different here not so much a shock and awe thing but it's more you're expecting delphiniums but oh and if you look a little closer you see a hummingbird because it's somewhat masked in there a little bit so it's and i noticed that in your work there's a number of pieces that there is insects of uh, different types that are in your works so how how important is that that you have like birds and ins and uh, flowers together and insects and flowers? Uh, it's actually quite important. I'm uh, a very naturalist. I love the beauty in the world, and my uh, show is actually called Th "Through My Eyes," and it's because I sometimes feel sad if I think people don't see all that I see. Um, I actually just read a quote this morning by a lady called Maddie says, I see the world differently now since she started painting. I see different colors. When I look at the trees, I see the various greens 
and I do that the spring. I love the spring, all the colors of the greens. I see the shadows of clouds in the sky and think, oh, now how would I paint that? And I used to sometimes worry about my driving because I'm always looking <laughs> at the clouds and things. So it's, I think as artists, we really see everything. We see the different colors and things. And uh, it's the beauty in this world. So do you feel that's important for an artist to to bring that out for other people to see? Is that one of our things that's I think really that's one of our goals as an artist, to make people realize, you know, there's green, but in that green, there's forest green, there's sage green, there's uh, lime green, there's just all these various colors. Yeah. It's not just one mm -hmm. color. And I, I think each color has the same thing. It has its, you know, um, analogous as colors, but they're the, the color spectrum within the color, whether you go from blue in the blue scheme or whether it's reds, they can be more burgundy or they can, you know, move around. I think, but understanding how those two, and we just talk about blues and burgundies right now, and we're just looking at this. Yeah, I, I really like this. Now, is this a collage? This, this is a collage. It's actually from a course. So this wasn't my own idea. So I have to say that right off. It's from Abyssimo. And she was showing how to apply gold leaf. So the left-hand side is gold leaf. So this is the mixture. It's watercolor, gold leaf, uh, pen and ink. That's white ink there. And... Um, it was, I have used gold leaf before this with watercolor, but gold leaf isn't often used that often with watercolor. Uh, so I kind of like that it's a different, different way. I did do a series on mass, Venetian mass, and uh, I had a lot of gold leaf in that. And I won awards for a couple of my paintings that were done with mass yeah. from a local yeah. art show yeah. no this is a nice design piece in, in itself just for but i like the dragonfly and i i just like the I, I guess the gold leaf there's just it's it's sometimes difficult to work with working with golds and uh understand it's a very rich color uh, but also shooting it is metallic it's hard to um get a good a good visual of it now this one is a pastel and it's of King Protea. And you'll find a lot of my paintings may have um, different flowers that you don't necessarily see here in North America. I've been fortunate enough to travel in the Caribbean and uh, to Hawaii. And these actually were from flowers that I'd taken a photo of in a market in Portugal, in Madeira. Mm, nice. And I had actually purchased some seeds when I was there. And the seeds are just like little feathers. And I brought them home. But unfortunately, I haven't been able to get them to uh, germinate at all. Yeah. Sometimes you can't. They just, <clears throat> well, they get with our climate and I guess the soil structure is a little different. Yeah. Yeah. Different. I tried to follow the instructions, but I haven't been able to capture those. Now I have... Uh, a palmaria tree that I was able to start and that's the tropical and I keep it in the house all winter and it goes out on my deck in the summer and it flowers, yeah. but I haven't had much luck with tropical plants. Yeah. No, this is just a unique flower, you know, just really looking at how that looks. But this, and this is soft pastel. I hear a strange sound in the background. Oh, that's my dog. He's falling asleep and he's snoring. Oh, he's snoring. <laughs> so he's old, does he? Yeah. He as long as we know what that is, we're fine. <laughs> You're okay. I didn't realize I'm deaf in one ear, so I didn't even hear him. Oh, okay. that's funny. I was just saying, is there something wrong with her? Oh, yeah. yeah. No? Yeah. yeah. We put no. the dog to sleep. Oh, my goodness. We put the dog to sleep. That's a bad sign. But no, he loves, he loves laying on my lap. 
Yeah. Oh, this is an iris. Am I correct? Is this? A... Yeah, this is a watercolor iris. And this is a purple one. I've also done a red one that I've given to my sister-in-law who lives in Wales. So I actually, I have paintings all over the world, really. I've known people and met people and done paintings and commissions for people all over. So, um, but this is Iris and it's very linear because of, because of the structure of the leaves. And I like the way the watercolor flows and blends yeah. in this painting. And a lot of times when you paint a plant, it's just the stem and the leaves. So, but pulling in a full green background behind it kind of sets it off. And I think it did a nice job. I think that you need to really design around what you're given. And I think, right. uh, you know, it just, it has a, uh, just kind of a loose feeling because it is a flower that will fall apart within minutes. Like it has its glory moment and then it has a falling apart. It falls apart more more quickly, I guess, and for a longer time than it blossoms nicely. Oh, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah. They're a beautiful flower. Are they part of the orchid family? You yes. Yeah. They are. Yeah. They are. Right. They are. And you can see very similar in the face of it that they're like the orchids. Yeah. 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 It's such a fragile little blossom that hook it to the main plant like they're just these tongues sticking in there they're just kind of it's kind of neat right so here's one of those ones where i see a real strong design thing happening there's it almost feels like you had all these elements and you laid them out on a table and it feels like a still life to me is that is that what this was well actually you're fairly close it was taken in my friend garden the photo and the butterfly actually i have found and the butterfly was deceased so i placed <laughs> this dead butterfly on this agerium plant and um, so i guess that part of it was designed and the lines and the leaves which at that time that would have been my um I'm trying to think of the name of that plant. Hosta. But I no longer have the hosta. Deer are abundant in my area. <laughs> I have I can wake up any day and see about seven deer in my yard. So I have to fence in my flowers now, unfortunately, if I want to save them. Well, I have a thing for that. My daughter has the same problem with her house. <clears throat> <clears throat> and the resident deer and she uses irish spring soap and cinnamon yeah i've heard of that and i've tr I tried the soap i've tried <laughs> various things and now i've just decided to live with them i uh fence yeah. around where my flowers are and then i buy flowers or shrubs that the deer don't necessarily eat but even sometimes they're desperate and will eat that if towards the end yeah, of the I don't know. yeah. Just have but, to, <clears throat> i don't know it's just yeah. one of those things they're beautiful the deer are the babies are gorgeous yeah. so i also take pictures and i've done paintings of them as well yeah yeah it's uh they're a they're a lovely nuisance i guess we'll yeah yeah uh, so many of our communities now, uh, I've, I live on the edge of town, and uh, I think I, I was driving to one of my events, and there was a fox went across the road and down between the houses. Yeah. Says, the coyotes come in, the fox come in, um, lots of rodents all the time, but there's always a moose or a deer coming up the river, uh, even the cougars and bear. So I Are think we the, taking over their land too, so... We are, and uh, we have, I don't know if New Brunswick, our forest fires are really ravaging them, and they're forcing the animals in different directions that they normally wouldn't be. Right. Well, mm -hmm. luckily, we don't have, we haven't had bad forest fires like you have out west or that, but, uh, but there's so many houses, and I think in this last year, we probably had 10 apartment buildings go up, you know, mm -hmm. and just the area is just becoming so full of people that it's very hard 
Yeah, no, it's hard to live with. <clears throat> it's beautiful to live within the forest, but it has its dangers as well. And uh, right, you, right, be aware of that and climate change as well. So, has climate change become? Is it some of the things that you're looking for? Do you do you think that's kind of rather than just painting pretty pictures? Do you do you try to put something in there that comments on our environment and changes and things? I, I don't really think I'm so into the environmental changes, except I certainly do recognize it with the changing of our weather, uh, where we used to have a lot of snow in the winter and now we don't type of thing. Um, but, and the summers are warm and warm earlier in that, I'm concerned about it, but it's not really part of my message at all. Yeah. My message is just really for people to slow down and see the beauty we have in our world. That's a and good be one. Grateful, yeah. Be grateful for yeah. what's right there in front of you. Yeah. No, very nice. So this one's just a nice, a nice, and I'll call it a little looser watercolor. The background is... <clears throat> painted it around. Yeah. And this is more, it's a light watercolor. Often when I paint watercolor, I'll do many layers, and this one doesn't have as many layers. But of course, these flowers are very light and easy to see through anyway, uh, yeah. kind of flowers. And this again is another tropical flower that's ginger and it's one of my favorites as well. And I love the different colors of the leaves with the ginger. Now you can get the ginger in this, this red color, or you can also get like pink and there's even white ginger and it grows in abundance in tropical areas. Yeah. Well, this one has a nice linear feel to it as well, like this, the structures. You know, bringing a plant in on all four sides of the page is really kind of, it anchors it. Um, but it it does make you look, I guess, at the, so you're not giving room for them to look over the plant. You have to look right through the plant um, in your painting. So it's a way of focusing a person on looking at your work. It, it changes quite a bit um you know the you know even the elements the three the three uh spikes there uh or blossoms become instrumental in, in holding your eye together in, in a piece of work so it's the triangular i guess composition if that's what you want to call yeah, it yeah. um but i actually like that i left the white of the paper for the background it brings the flowers I find forward. Yeah. yeah and <clears throat> this is a pastel, and actually, I did this on on a course when I was with uh, Richard Flynn at Kingsbury Gardens, which is a beautiful gardens in St. Andrews, New Brunswick, and it's uh, purity and white. It's just a show all the different colors there actually is in white white isn't just white yeah oh you got that yeah and there's what how many thousand types of white i always heard that um with the background though is that background just a black paper is that a the background is actually it's um pastel paper stonehenge oh okay paper yeah i often would paint on canson or, um, but this is Stonehenge, so it was really the black of the paper. So the thing about pastel is it's like, like butter or chalk, but you uh, have to be very careful that you don't smudge <laughs> yeah. your paint onto the black. Yeah. Luckily, um, soft bread you can use as an eraser to lift off color if you need to another thing is a kneadable eraser will lift a little bit if you need to make the edges uh so is this an oil pastel or chalk pastel you work with that's chalk pastel soft pastel 
Yeah. <clears throat> I had a friend that, yeah. So do you work flat on the table with these ones? Um, no, that would have been on an easel that I would have worked with that one upright in the garden itself. Um, sometimes I'll work a little, I'll work flat on a table with those, but I also have my, sus, my son who he's an artist as well. My son blows glass and he's very good with woodworking. He's a, a carpenter. He made me a couple of, um, forget what the name of them are they're to keep your arm off your work so okay. i can actually lay <clears throat> lay my arm on this piece of wood but it keeps it off what i'm working on and so i like, use that so it's, like quite a mulch, often. it's like a malt stick yeah it's like a malt stick that's exactly what it is but it's got both sides with the bar in the middle and uh yeah because i do a lot of pastel commissions portraits and so i'll work fairly flat for those yeah so a friend of mine was a pastel artist uh, he's since passed away but um his board he worked vertical but his board was over vertical so it came forward at the top and pushed in at the bottom just a little bit so he wasn't working at 90 degrees it was just it was more than that so that the chalk dust didn't go down over top of his work. The right, chalk dust, fall. it, it falls onto the rail in the in the in the in, in the foreground in the bottom of the of the piece of work. So again, his pastels were not just straight up and down; they were cambered, tilted in a little bit at the top, so that they would uh, shed the chalk that was being put on. It was kind of a neat idea. So yeah, he, uh, my art table actually tilts like that. Yeah, so that was kind I have of a, a full table that will tilt. <clears throat> and this one as well is um, pastel. Yeah. The and butter, butterfly is totally absorbed into that. Yes, yes. Is that a sunflower? Is that a sunflower? It's a sunflower. Yeah. It's a sunflower, and the butterfly is in there like doing his thing. I like the power of this piece. I've always liked sunflowers, and it's just, they're, they're such a large, beautiful flower. But this one, it just has a lot of energy coming off the bottom of the page. It just forces itself. It's almost like that butterfly got sucked right into the, <laughs> yeah. into the flower a little bit, but it, I can see it's got an energy. I mean, and this one has a, a lot of, I'm, I call it more of a flat feeling to it, in, in more designed, I guess I'll call it. And uh, in, in flat, in in, um, in the perspective of it, it's still and very it's, organic in shape. But right, you can yeah. see there's also some spots here where the paper is showing through. The paper is actually black that that's oh, done okay. on as well. Okay. Yeah. The black tends to make them a bit more dramatic. I think I like working on the darker colors with pastel. Yeah. Then bring all the and bring all the lights forward on it. Really yeah. brings the lights forward mm -hmm. and makes it pop. Yeah. yeah. I assume some very beautiful uh, figurative work and portraits done on on dark surfaces. It, it's quite yes. Yeah. They become quite striking. You know, they they just they got a dramatic edge about them, and I think I think it's I think it's a challenge for people to start using it a little bit. They got to practice with it a bit because we're so used to putting black on white or color on white. We have white gessoed canvases and, and such, right? And now, exactly. you know, doing the underpainting and getting your, your color down before you do your painting, Look, maybe painting with a, a complementary. So do working with complementaries help you in, in this as well? Like if you were to say you wanted to paint green, do you think about uh, maybe uh, orangier background? for instance would you think well i don't tend to do that as much but i do find i mean i've seen artists that start off with like really pink or red background and then the painting's light and it's kind of hard to figure out how they do that but i guess it's about the same as i do with this black it's just it does help you build up a little faster um a lot of yeah, I think a lot of it is that color kind of sparkles through in areas. It does, it does. In the under layers, right? And 
and the underlayer for sure, for sure. So I would probably, if I was going to do green, I may take a green and use that as part, part of the background or use it as the actual board. Right. Again, it just all depends. When you get into blossoms, and we've had other flower floral artists that we've talked to about before, and we talk about this. When they get in close on a blossom, they become really abstract. Thank um, you. And these shapes and colors have to hold it all together. So you sort of still know what it is, but it it's just it this one is probably one of your more abstract pieces in 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 uh, in composition, I guess. It's kind of exciting to see um, this happening. The, the color balances and the complementaries that are happening as well make it zing. Yeah. This would have been a close up I would have taken of a bouquet that I yeah. had. And um, the spider chrysanthemum is, I've done a painting with just spider chrysanthemum. And if you're doing just that, you can make it more detailed where this is a little more, like you say, abstract. Yeah. No, for sure. No. Well, yeah. And the thing is you have to keep the energy has to still be there. To, you know, these white flowers coming off the bottom or then they hold up. Uh, they're like hands holding this thing. I understand. I see a lot of different things in there. People may not normally see themselves in a piece of work. And I'll actually just say what I see in them. And I mean, it's, it's just what I do, but <laughs> yeah. I, in other words, I'm saying that these, these white flowers tend to be holding this boom, you know, blossom up a little bit. It's just one of these things that I just noticed. Right. We'll zing along here a little bit. We got quite a few things to show people. So, um, so is this, this wild like, roses, wild roses. Okay. Again, yeah. fairly, fairly loose, really going yes. from very, very light light from the one side into more of a, a deeper color to the on the right. Yeah. right and this is also what uh, this one's done with watercolor and roses are very common along the ocean here in new right. brunswick and people have them in their yards too of course but uh, it's very common to see wild rose bushes on the rocks by the ocean <clears throat> Yeah, I think they're quite common across the country, different different types of roses, but the wild roses are uh, they're a really they, nice sign of summer. And they smell beautiful. Yeah, they do. And this is actually a bouquet of roses that I took a photo of. Now, these are tea roses in that. They're not uh, wild ones. But again, there's the various colors, the orange and yellow and red and white, yeah. different colors. <clears throat> yeah. I think a lot of times the, the, the color theory is just, you know, watching colors that mix well together and other ones that eh, maybe don't. It really, the other colors are around the yellow rose is really dominant. It really pops off the page. Right. Because you know, the other ones have been toned down um there it's like it they're there but they're not the most important rows those other ones because i think you have to make decisions as an artist i think i think that's uh i think that's really important because everything well, everything can't be important no and that's probably that's in the top third like if you're looking at the uh, where it's placed so your eye does kind of go to that and down in the left hand bottom corner i've got it a little more abstract yeah. so your eyes tend to go to the area that's more real um so does does the abstract part creeping more and more into your work like the looking your is, eye looking for those things it is some um, because um well actually if I were to say who my favorite artist is, my favorite artist is Monet. And I mean, his work is not real, but it looks real. You know what I'm saying? The Impressionists. So I guess I'm influenced by the Impressionists. 
Yeah. Um, because that's what I like. But again, I try to paint real because my husband would say to me often when I first started painting, well, what's that supposed to be? <laughs> well, it doesn't look very real. And I mean, he's my top critic, I guess. And if I got discouraged, I would have quit years ago. But uh, anyway, it's... Uh, uh, don't, 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 let him, don't let anybody discourage you from... No, doing I don't. I, don't. I, I look at some people's work who is totally abstract, and I think, well, how can you say you're an artist? Because anybody could just put that paint on, but that's not right. The way there is colors that look better together and the way you put things together and that. So... Uh, Wait, art, art, art really is at a lot of different levels of learning and understanding. To you can't just jump in and do something. It takes there's kind of a journey that you go through, even as a buyer or a person understanding art. Um, day one, if it doesn't look exactly like something, is is one feeling. But as you traverse through your career, you can slowly convince people that flowers can look like this or this can look like that and yeah. all of a sudden maybe you don't need to put as much detail in anymore maybe it's more about something else that it's part so, of your journey it's part of your journey right that you're doing. right and it's how things make you feel unless of course if you're doing a commission someone will want it to be like that like real i mean i find that's the most difficult thing about doing portrait commissions there are people want to look really good but they want it to look like them <laughs> which sometimes yeah. is difficult okay you want me to leave out those wrinkles all right i did a portrait once like that and uh she did not like the portrait very much but um there was a very kind of famous picasso one where he had created a portrait of gertrude stein <clears throat> one of his art uh, handlers and she looked at it and she says that doesn't look like me and he says it will eventually <laughs> <laughs> there you go so yeah. you will grow into the art he was saying basically. <laughs> because you look yeah. at you look the way picasso would do a portrait right you right you do it the way you your style is and the way you see things for um, sure it's i mean there is uh other artists that have done, you know, things of famous people that have a certain look to them. And they like seeing their vision by, say, an Andy Warhol style of work or a Picasso style of work. And it creates um, kind of a universality of that figure that's unique when a different artist stays within their style and doesn't bend to what the customer wants but eventually they are the one who pays the bill right <clears throat> so this one i threw in this again these three pods again is another strength and the butterfly is seems to be uh, hopefully this one was a live butterfly was this one he more? was he <laughs> was he was alive yes they, and this again is on echinacea uh cone flowers which i think are beautiful flowers and they have all these different colors in in the center of them in their red and now there's all different color cone flowers i've actually purchased some this year that are orange and and red ones and all different colors you know the background in this would have been uh wet watercolor with salt sprinkled in and yeah. that's giving that texture yeah. behind it. It's and, probably a beautiful abstract piece here. Yeah. It's Earlier like, we were talking about um, the light shining through. And this is a hibiscus that I'd taken a photo of and it was backlit. And you can see the light in this painting i really it's <clears throat> one of my favorites and then i have another one with the two with two of the same flower from the front and i like them as a pair but uh so how how big are most of your paintings how big do they quarter sheet half sheet um i do a lot of eight by ten which is 
little less than a quarter sheet. Yeah. But um, I often work on on a quarter sheet or a half sheet. Yeah. So do you present, is most of your work presented with glass, glazed works framed and with glass? Yes, yeah. It's presented with glass. Now, a few of my paintings in this show, the more expensive ones like the... Um, the white lilies that we show, purity and white. Now that is completely framed. That would come framed. Yeah. And as well as um, I have another one in the show with purple flowers. So if, if it's fairly expensive, it probably would come framed. Most of them I, I send matted at least. Yeah, because there's so. other people. Other people have been uh, <clears throat> mounting work to... Um, panel board and right. they're built up and then they're actually waxed they're it's doing like, a wax or a glaze over it. no i haven't done that and it would would make a difference because you can see the light even on my background things here glass tends to glare but you can get non-glare glass and i do have that for some of my works so well that's been great talking to you about your work i mean it's it's nice to see um, you and your garden and your and, and what you get out of your flowers and things. I think each of us has our own journey and, and experience in those. Um, there he is. There's the flower right there. Yeah. Oh, sure. I'm the apple of everyone's eye. Um, <laughs> so here's, I, your stuff is very beautiful, but I have Thank a question. You. I ask this to every artist. How much does it cost? If somebody wants to buy one of your your um your your paintings how much does it cost okay. from what's the range okay to tell you roughly um uh, what i have in this show i have priced with with the um mat or frame included depending um right. but they will go i thought i had a price list down here usually oh, when just I guess it, <laughs> yeah, well, usually when I do a painting, I roughly charge two dollars a square inch. Okay, I do. A I knew a girl like that, but that's another thing. So okay, yeah, so two dollars a square inch, <laughs> and so so what's the rough size of your of your paintings? So like I'd say they, most of my paintings are eight by ten, eleven by fourteen. Okay. Um, right. My larger ones would be full sheets, and so they may go. So my paintings would go from about. 250 maybe say to about 600 700 okay which and that's canadian feet. yeah and that's canadian okay. which is so in america that's like a dollar yeah right, i was gonna say in america that's like six dollars and fifty cents so um, yeah. they just charge a lot yeah. for it. it's yeah. a lot for shipping and for the euro um she gives it to you for free but once again charges a lot for shipping so it all yeah. depends out no so, so we have my cool. prices online i've included shipping and uh matted if they're matted oh, wow. or if someone's questioning about the two more expensive pieces those are both framed very cool very, very but just so cool. we'll have more than two We'll have your link below so everybody okay. can get ready to get a hold of you. And for some reason, if you can't figure out how to click a link, you'll be surprised. Get a hold of us here at the show, and we will put you in touch with Jocelyn, and you can purchase some of her beautiful art. Yeah, there you go. Well, I appreciate that very much. Thank you. Thank you okay. again. For Thank you. And the dates my show is going to actually be online at Artists in Canada. Is it September 16th to the 30th? It is, it is, and you'll be able to see some of uh, Jocelyn's work and contact us about it. And uh, this interview will actually be posted with it as well. So Great. Uh, we'll be there. So a couple of weeks away, here we go. Thank and, you. Well, good, luck thank on you. The, good luck on the show. And thank you so much for your time today. And everybody, don't forget to subscribe and like and tell Jocelyn in the comments how much you like her artwork. And see everybody next thank week. Cheers, everybody. Bye now. Bye-bye.